before starting my lecture, actually, I have to raise my agal high. Really, your conference is amazing. And really, I'm proud of that. And thank you for uh, this um, excellent, really, organization. So it's really mashkuri. Mahsin Abu Al-Az, Abu Al-Azm, Hak Faqa. He's an Egyptian <coughs> painter, and he reflects Zaman Al-Jameel. Ayam, kill kan indena sulfonal urea, aldomit, insulin, and that's it. Seems that's life getting more complicated by the time. Now, in the era of complicated medication, complicated uh, 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 complication of the disease, and, and when we discovered more and more about the disease, and that makes life more complicated. Now, diabetes is not hyperglycemia. Now, if this concept is in the mind of a patient, now, but if it's in the mind of the doctor, it is khatia. Diabetes is in methodology, there is what's called the Panadora box. If the Panadora box opens, so this is diabetes, actually. So <clears throat> one-third of the all heart attacks and strokes are uh, caused or by or accompanied by diabetes mellitus. Two-fifths of the heart failure admissions is by diabetes and caused by diabetes. Two-thirds of all non-traumatic amputation below, low, below knee amputation, if we talk about the Elgam and the car traffic accidents because of diabetes, and like 50% or 60% of those people going to to Ladeli or whatever to do hemodialysis is because of diabetes or with diabetes. So diabetes is not hyperglycemia. And uh, diabetes is, the, is, is uh, a major cause of cardiovascular disease. Actually, once you diagnose a patient with type 2 diabetes mellitus, that means he is having cardiovascular disease equivalent. And, and once the patient been diagnosed to have diabetes, he has lost six to seven years of his life. Now, if, he has, if, have, if he's not presenting with ischemic heart disease, but when he presents with ischemic heart disease, his life expectancy is 12 years shorter. This is statistics. I'm not telling you this patient or that patient, but this is statistical facts. So diabetes <coughs> shortens life by neglection. Okay. And, and diabetes actually kills more people than any other disease, non-communicable disease, and communicable disease as well. Kill seven uh, seconds, there is somebody in this world die because of diabetes. So, and, and, and I'm talking about uh, mortality. Mandat kalam and complication is much, much uh, more, more frequent. And if you compare it with other uh, uh, diseases, uh, like uh, malaria, like uh, 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 HIV disease, still diabetes is more, uh, causing more mortality than the other uh, uh, diseases. And what causes hyperglycemia for type 2 diabetes? It's, it's actually multifactorial. يقول مريض والله أنا أنا يعني البارحة ما أكلت وارتفع السكر عندي أنا البارحة I I've I've taken my medication I didn't have my supper وقعد الصبح has hyperglycemia yes it can happen because it is multifactorial causes behind hyperglycemia and diabetes we have the problem of uh, insulopenia with the with the in, in the in the in the uh, uh, pancreas we have uh, 
Vale, es ok. Vale. Zoom. Ok. Ok. So, insulinopenia, decrease insulin secretion, relative increase, decrease insulin secretion in face of the demand. We have decrease uh, incretin effect, effect in terms either by quantity or quality, and then uh, increase lipolysis, and then uh, el, el, um, el increased glucose reabsorption. For some reason, when, once your, your blood sugar is more than 10 millimoles, it should be spilled off in the urine. For some reason, the kidney start to reabsorb to increase the level further. high. And there's decreased glucose uptake by the peripheral tissues, the muscles and the others. And the brain also is having a role in hyperglycemia. The liver also have a major role in hyperglycemia uh, by hepatic glucose overproduction. And the problem with the alpha cells in the pancreas, it secretes, keeps secreting the glucagon, raising the blood sugar further, and uh, the, the issue of uh, pancreas, uh, uh, beta cells is there. So hyperglycemia is not only because of food intake. There's lots of other causes uh, behind this problem. Okay, so, so what's the rule of the kidney? The kidney has a major role in glucose homeostasis, in, in glucose control in our body, physiologically speaking. So glucose release from the renal cortex via gluconeogenesis, the, 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 the kidney produces glucose and Glucose uptake and glycolysis from renal medulla, it takes up glucose and glucose reabsorption from the proximal uh, convoluted tubules. So I'm going to focus today on the role of kidney in glucose homeostasis. Now, uh, 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 we have like, you know, 45 to 500 uh, 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 grams of glucose running in our body. Now, the glucose turnover, the, the glucose usage daily is like 250 grams. Half of it used by the brain and the other half used by the whole body. The major consumer of glucose in our body is the brain actually. And that takes 50% of the glucose and what we eat in general daily around like 180 to 100 uh, grams of glucose per day and the, uh, the glucose production by gluconeogenesis and glucogenolysis, glucogenolysis is like 70 grams per day and the renal glucose filtration which passes through the kidney it is 180 grams per day all of it physiologically speaking, all of it will be reabsorbed again back to the body. So the urine is glucose-free, supposedly. Showing the jagger here. Yeah, let me just see. So, okay, good. Good, okay. So the green glucose, so the, 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 the kidney contributes up to 20% of the glucose running in our uh, circulation. So not all, again, not all the glucose in our body coming from the food. The kidney contributes up to 20% and the liver contributes to 80% of the non, uh, the, the, the glucose not coming from the, uh, and, and the food. This is in the physiological cases, but when we are stressed by fasting, the role of the kidney in terms of uh, glucose homeostasis uh, uh, increases up to 2.5 times compared to the, uh, um, to the states where there is no stress. 
And at the same time, I'm talking about during fasting, the role of the, of the, the, of the liver in terms of producing uh, glucose reduces uh, 25%. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So there's a balance. There's a balance between glucose production and glucose uh, uh, <clears throat> uptake to keep our blood sugar in the physiological state between like 5.6 to 4. Kill every 11 minutes, the, the pancreas uh, pushes like, you know, a surge of uh, insulin so that it is a way if we make like, you know, a curve of our insulin level for blood, we should have a flat. I'm talking about for fasting state. It's not 100% flat, but it's flat more or less. And the, time, the same time, the liver produces glucose by gluconeogenesis and glycogenosis. So there is a balance between glucose up uptake and glucose intake, and also the, uh, the other tissues like the, 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 uh, uh, the pancreas. Sorry, I can't find. Okay, the pancreas secretes insulin when there is hyperglycemia and secretes glucagon in terms of when it is hypoglycemia. At the end of the day, at, at, and, and the re net result is a balance between production and uptake to keep the blood sugar uh, 5.6 minus or plus. Okay. So what happens now? When, I'm talking about physiology now, sorry, but this is important. Now, all the blood passes it through the kidney and uh, it is going to be filtered. So the glucose and amino acids, electrolytes, water will be reabsorbed to, and at the same time, there is secretion of the hydrogen, which is the acids, and potassium, so that the homeostasis, all the body stays balanced. When we talk about the glucose, all the glucose is going to be reabsorbed, so the urine is glucose free. Now, where the glucose is going to be absorbed, is going to be absorbed for the first segment and the second segment and the third segment of the convoluted tubers. But 90% of the glucose is going to be reabsorbed at S1 and S2 by the SGLT2 uh, proteins. What left in the comfy something escaped from S1 and S2 will be going to be uptaken by the S3, which is like 10%. So when the urine uh, formed, it, there is no glucose. And here where the science works. How? Okay. Now, the system, the SGLT2, is that a protein? Mm -hmm. It's a protein for the human side of the tubules. So, how the human side? How the blood side? Okay? So, when the urine passes here, the, the system of SGLT2 will gonna be, will going to uptake the glucose with the sodium and secretes and by system uh, collaborating with the sodium potassium ATPase pump. This is a pump. This is that's this energy. This does not need energy. At the end of the day, all the glucose is going to be reabsorbed by the cells through the SGLT2 to the circulation back.
هذا the slide before كان about the SGLT2. This is the SGLT1 also, which also going to work best for the third part of the convoluted tubule. So this is a physiology to understand how the SGLT2 inhibitors works. Now we have the SGLT2 and SGLT1. The one which is more responsible about glucose reabsorption from the kidney is the SGLT2. We have the SGLT1, موجود منا في الكيدني, but have a small uh, contribution to the reabsorption of glucose. It's more or less uh, present in the gut, and that also works in terms of, uh, in, in the, and its role is to reuptake uh, glucose from the gut as well. So the focus is the SGLT2. Okay. Uh, let's just skip this one. So, so the, when we inhibit, mm -hmm. when we inhibit in SGLT2, this will lead to reverse of glucotoxicity, decreases the blood sugar. How? By insulin sensitivity and the increasing insulin sensitivity for the muscles, by increasing insulin sensitivity, sensitivity for the liver, suppression of gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, and decreasing the gluconeogenesis and stimulating the beta cell function as well. So this is the function of inhibition of SGLT2. Okay, so the SGLT2 uh, uh, will meet the needs in diabetes care. We need uh, a medication with no hypoglycemia with, uh, and, and works in harmony with other uh, anti-diabetic uh, medication and improves the glucose and weight, support other cardiovascular intervention and promotes weight loss and corrects the novel pathophysiological defect. There is nothing in this world is 100% perfect. There are always some problems in here or there. But anyway, this suppression, when we suppress the, SGL2, uh, the SGLT2 uh, perfectly, we, we might reach these uh, goals. Okay, so the SGLT2 inhibitors affects and potential cardiovascular uh, 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 impact. So the SGLT2 inhibitors will lead to decreased blood pressure because there is a, 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 a diuresis caused. What's that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the SGLT, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors will lead to decreased blood pressure but with no increase in the heart rate. There is decrease in the arterial stiffness, some, some studies show that. And <coughs> sympathetic nervous system activity will uh, be reduced. And the inflammation, oxidative stress will be reduced. Some studies showing that decreases the albumin urea, decreases the uric acid, decreases the weight, reduces the weight, uh, not that major decrease, but again, it reduces weight and decreases the glucose and insulin. So this medication with these functions, the net result is a potential cardiovascular effect uh, showing a, a cardiovascular, positive cardiovascular uh, effect. Again, to Mehsina Wilaz, Again, so, so the, the whole issue now, we'd like to have a, a medication which can control the hyperglycemia, controls the body weight without causing hypoglycemia. And have a helm to tabib. Now this medication might give us this, these functions, uh, maybe partially, but it, it gives us this, uh, this function. Okay, 
Now, this was proven by a major study, Lehi Emberek. And the shift of Stockholm was presented in Stockholm قبل كم سنة يمكن أعتقد 2008 2015 يمكن. I never seen applause تصفيق for a study like this one. الناس ظلت نص ساعة تصفق because of the result showed by the empiric. So the empiric flowsin اللي هو دواء اللي هو أسجية inhibitor اللي هنتكلم عنه lead to a, a, a very positive clear cardiovascular uh, uh, output. So the study was uh, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled cardiovascular outcome trial. And the objective was to examine the long-term effect of empagliflozin versus placebo in addition to standard of care on cardiovascular morbidity in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. So specifically was designed to see the cardiovascular effect on patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. So what happened? Okay. So, okay. Now the study was really a major study. It's a multi-center study uh, expanded from Asia, North America, Europe and Africa, where participation was really huge, like uh, I think it was uh, six to 7,000 uh, patients. And the design was they, uh, they, they, uh, they, there was two group, arms, one with placebo, a third, and the other third one on empagliflozin 10, and the third arm was 25 milligrams. And been, they followed up for between two to five years. And this is the result. It was, it showed that there is relative risk the, uh, reduction in the primary outcome, the MACE, the cardiovascular death, cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, and non-fatal stroke, up to 14% reduction, significant. 14% reduction compared to the people whom are not on uh, empagliflozin. And it reduces the cardiovascular death up to 32%, 38% reduction. Uh, and, and this is amazing, really, that you have a molecule which can protect your patient, patients up to 30, 38%. And the hospitalization for heart failure, we know that now there is the entity, macrovascular complications of the diabetes in terms of strokes, uh, coronary heart disease, amputation. Now we know that the entity of non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, direct effect of the muscles of the heart is an issue, and it's a major issue actually. Now, with the, the empagliflozin and the uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, the, the need for admission for this uh, problem reduced up to 35%. And what about the adverse effect of the SGLT2 inhibitors? Just minimal compared to the, to the placebo. Actually, it is comparable. So there was no major uh, uh, side effects compared to the, uh, uh, to the placebo, except in one or two items. I will mention it in, in, in a moment now. So the adverse event was comparable. And uh, so, but there was an issue about the urinary tract problems. There wa it was noticed that there is increase in the uh, UTIs, but uh, actually it wasn't serious 
enough, but there was definitely, particularly in ladies, with uh, 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 see in, 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 um, in, in the genitourinary tract infection, uh, uh, particularly the mycosis. But overall, the safety was there compared to the uh, placebo uh, uh, agent. Um, okay, so this is what I just mentioned, uh, urinary tract uh, complications. Okay, so in summary, in summary, the Impareg study, which is studying Impagliflozin, showed that there is decrease up to 14% in the mace and 38% in cardiovascular death, 32% of all cause mortality, and 35% decrease in the need for admission for heart failure. So other overall safety profile of empagliflozin was consistent with previously, uh, previous clinical trials and current label uh, information. So let me just... Um, it's really important to know how much you need to treat in terms of number of patients to get the positive results which you need. So, simvastatin, zucor, sabagan. So, you need to treat uh, uh, th 30 patients over a year as, uh, to save one life. And ramipril, uh, you need to treat 56 patients to save one life per year. The empagliflozin, you need to treat, treat 39 patients over a year to save one life. This is good number, it is a good number. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a, it's a very good uh, number. Now, the empiric outcome treating 1,000 uh, patients uh, with type 2 at high risk, uh, cardiovascular risk, with empagliflozin for three years lead to saving 25 lives and uh, um, uh, saving 22 cardiovascular deaths and preventing 14 admissions to the hospital. But it's have, it's have its own negative side as well. We know that. So there is 35%, uh, 35 uh, additional genital infections, mild usually, and then several additional genital infections leading to discontinuation. So overall, this molecule, this class of medication is effective and safe at the same time. Yeah. Three minutes left. So again? Three minutes left from the lecture time. Three, three minutes left. Three, three minutes? Okay. So I'm going to also to, uh, to speak about the renal uh, um, uh, so, empagliflozin patient with chronic kidney disease, it led to, let me just give you the results, Madame uh, Fitahdid, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a big study actually, but it's, this is the result actually. So, there's a primary composite outcome in the kidney disease progression. So, using the SGLT2 inhibitors, I'm talking now about the EMPA now, reduces the deterioration of the kidney leading to cardiovascular death up to 28%. So it really also protected the kidney and also, it's, um, also it reduces the hospitalization for heart failure with kidney disease up to uh, like 14%, significant 14%, and reduces the deterioration of the kidney function in people with already having renal impairment compared to the placebo. So overall, it is having, it is renal protective as well, and the safety is the same actually. And uh, really, for, for, so as a summary, 
the trial showed uh, it, it stopped early. Huh, this study was stopped early. Why? Because it showed a very positive result, a protective result. They have to stop it. It's not ethical to continue when you know that this molecule is really protecting and showing protective uh, uh, results. <laughs> and the impagliflozin reduced the relative risk of kidney disease progression and cardiovascular death by 28% in people with renal impairment and diabetes. Treatment effect was demonstrated irrespective of underlying cause of, cardiovascular, uh, of chronic kidney disease. So it can be because of diabetic, uh, 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 diabetic nephropathy or other reasons like uh, uh, glomerular nephritis, for example, or hypertensive disease. And uh, treatment, uh, sorry, and a significant relative risk reduction of 14% was observed in all causes of uh, hospitalization. Overall, safety data was shown to be, uh, uh, to be uh, compared, comparable to the other studies. And that's it. Thank you very much. One question. Yes, please. Sir. Victor Attar uh, thank you very much for your uh, good, informative lecture. So, uh, me as a family practitioner in uh, the clinic, which one I should choose, DABA or AMBA? Wahakteen. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let me put it that way. Um, you should choose the molecule where the study. We know that the MPA, the DAPA, actually all of them are working. And if, uh, ASAD, AAD suggested four molecules can work in the same time. So, but when you talk about heart failure, uh, in, in particular, so the DAPA and the MPA are really uh, recommended. But the others can also use in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease to protect them. So um, for me, I would use the, the, the molecules which the data and the published data and the guidelines suggest to use. And one of them is the, is the MPA. Not, not the only one, one of them. Thank you, Doctor, for your great lecture and for your uh <laughs> ah, sorry. Thank you, Doctor, for your great uh, uh, lecture and for your kindness word about our uh, uh, conference. Uh, sorry, uh, Doctor, I have two questions for you, and uh, they are relative to each other. Uh, if we have a patient with a single kidney and he is kidney donor, does we consider him as a high risk patient for kidney complication, newly diagnosed uh, diabetes mellitus? And if he is uh, obese, uh, which agent we uh, will start to him? Uh, a agent like uh, SGLB, uh, LGLT2, or we start with the G agent GLB1 was reduce the uh, okay. weight? Good question. Thank you very much for the question. Actually, having single kidney does, with normal function doesn't put you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a high risk to develop chronic kidney disease, so long your kidney is okay, and there is no risk factors, like you know, diabetes or uncontrolled hypertension. So single kidney means with normal function is normal. Now, in terms of which molecules you're going to choose if you are targeting L L L L obesity, well, I think the, uh, the GLP-1 receptor agonists are more potent in terms of weight reduction compared to the SGLT2 uh, in inhibitors. Sorry? For, for same patient with one kidney. one kidney or, or two kidney, no, mm. normal kidneys, I will use. Mm. By the way, the SGLT2 inhibitors can be used 
and until you reach the level of uh, G uh, estimated GFR of 45%. Uh, then uh, the, those does not work as um, glucose treatment. They still may be used to protect your heart, to kidney. The, S the, the GLP-1 receptors can be given, although we don't have many studies about the end-stage renal failures, how it's going to perform. So if, if I'm going to choose a medication to control the blood sugar and weight, prefer, uh, maybe I'm going to choose uh, the, uh, the uh, GLP-1 receptors agonist. And now we have a molecule which combines GLP-1 receptor agonist and GIP as well, which is coming soon. Yes, please. Uh, I am Dr. Tariq from Taman, family medicine specialist. Uh, just I wanted to uh, raise a point uh, very important that in uh, 2021 uh, has been approved that G, uh, the GLT2 inhibitors uh, have been approved to uh, be used alone without diabetes for uh, patients with chronic kidney disease. And they have been very beneficial for them. So if you can highlight yes, this point. I, I totally agree with the principle. Yes, thank you very much for raising. Actually, our colleagues now, cardiologists, start to use the, uh, the SGLT2 inhibitors in their patients with heart failure, even if they are not having diabetes. So, yes, actually this molecule is having benefit beyond glycemic control. And now, because now we have reached an era where our medication was supposed to be glycemic controlling medication start to be used by our colleagues for nephrology or for cardiology to control the, to control the situation where there's no diabetes as well. So I totally agree with, with your statement, theoretically speaking. I need to see this study, but from the theoretical point of view, it's correct 100%. Yes, thank you very much. 